Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to learn how to make the following effect when we hover our mouse on top of a NPC we're going to highlight them. So to do this I'm using a shader that we're going to download from Unify Wiki and I'm also using my interface and my input manager. Before we continue, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you will get future updates. So now let's begin. So here we have the project before I edit all of those things. And the first thing I want to do is actually uh, tidy up here a little bit. So I'm just going to grab all these scripts and put them into my scripts folder. And this HP potion, I'm just going to throw it into my textures for now so that it's so now the next thing we want to do is go and download the silhouette outlined diffuse shader from unify wiki the link is going to be in the description so you can grab it from there i'm not going to go through it um, there is definitely a lot of different ways that you can achieve an outline effect um, so we are just going to copy this here the first part and we're going to use it in our project. So I'm going to make a new folder here. I'm going to call this folder my shaders. And inside here, we're going to create a new shader, just a standard surface shader. And we're going to call it outline shader. You can name it whatever you want. It's not necessary to follow the name inside the shader script. And sorry if I'm coughing or sneezing during this video because I am a little bit sick. I've been sick for two weeks already, so I apologize in advance. So this is a shader. We're not going to go into too much detail about shaders, but we're just going to replace all of this with the code we got from Unify Wiki here. All this, we're just going to replace everything inside. If we select our witch doctor, and we go to the material of the witch doctor. So we just click on him. Here's the material. If we change the material, you will see that we have a new material, a new shader type here called outlined. And inside is the silhouette diffuse. So we're going to use that. Uh, the character went weird a little bit. So what we want to do is change this color to white. The outline color, we're going to choose an outline. I I want to go for yellow because I already got tired of the orange highlight that we get from Unity. That's the outline color. And then we have the outline width. So you can see, um, you can't really see clear on the scene, but you can see better on the scene view. There is an outline that comes and goes when we drag this slider. So before we start typing any code, I want to, so I'm just going to move this guy a little bit to the left so we can see him better. I am going to uh, change this maximum value because right now the maximum value is 0 0.03. That's a little bit thin. I want to make the outline a little bit thicker. So what we're going to do is come here to the properties of this shader and we are going to change. So you see here there is a range that goes from 0 0.0 to 0 0.03 with a default value of 0 0.05. So we're going to change this to something like 0 0.2. And I know 0 0.2 is good because I already tested it, but I just wanted to let you know. So now we changed that value. We can actually drag this lighter even further. So from 0 to 0 0.2, that's what we want to do. So now that we have our material and our shader ready, we're going to go to our interfaces folder and open up our eye clickable interface and we're going to create two new functions one name that i was going to use is on mouse enter but unity already has this function as part of mono behavior i think so we're going to use another name because we don't want to use unity's one we're going to use our own uh, for the sake of learning and also for the sake of doing it ourselves more flexibility uh, maybe in the future. So we're going to call it on hover enter. And we need also a on hover exit. So these two functions 
are going to be called from our input manager whenever we enter the mouse on top of an eye clickable object and when we leave from it. Uh, right now you will see we have a bunch of errors because these classes should be implementing those functions. So we just click on that light bulb implement interface. I want to remove the um, not implemented exception. So I'm just going to copy these two functions here and I'm just going to copy them inside our NPC class, our enemy controller class, because we can click enemies on our NPC controller class. We still have this class, um, the NPC. What else do we have? Uh, I think that's it. Item NPC, NPC controller. We should get rid of all these errors. So now we actually have to call the function from the input manager. So let's go to the input manager and we're going to be doing this on the update. We already have all the functions that allow us to know if we're on top of an eye clickable or not. But these functions are being called only when we press the mouse button. Now we actually want to check every frame because it can be at any time. I don't have a mouse e a mouse button event. Uh, it can be at any time that my mouse hovers an NPC or goes away from an NPC and we need to be checking each frame. So I'm going to start by making another scope. I'm going to call it uh, on hover scope because I want to I don't want to have repeated variables names. Um, so here I'm going to copy all of this except the on press up because we don't need that. We're going to check the same, but instead of using on left click, I'm going to be calling on hover enter and same here on hover enter. We're not going to attack. And um, I think that's it. Uh, of course, we have to give a function to this. It's being called, but nothing is happening. So on hover enter, uh, we're just going to debug dot log something on hover enter. <laughs> and now we can try it. <clears throat> so now if I hover on top of my NPC, you see that actually the function is being called every frame. So what we're going to do is have a variable that is going to store an I clickable. So if I enter an I clickable, I'm going to store it in a private variable. And then in the next frame, I'm going to check if I already have a I clickable and then I'm going to compare it if it's the same as the one we're hovering on this frame. So there we can actually call only on enter and we're not going to keep repeatedly calling the function again and again and again. So first we need to create the private variable that is going to store the I clickable that we got on the last frame. So I'm just going to call it current clickable. You could call it last clickable. Maybe it's not going to make as much sense. But anyway, we're going to have that there. Um, we are not going to check now that if this is null or not. We first need to check if this, the clickable, this is going to be current frame clickable. All right. So we're going to get this. And then we're going to compare if clickable is not equal to current clickable. So if they are different, the one we get now from the one we already got from previous frame, we are going to, um, first of all, we're going to call the on hover enter because it's a new clickable, right? And then we're going to set the current clickable equals to clickable. So current clickable actually can be called uh, last clickable or previous clickable. Uh, yeah, maybe it will make more sense. So previous clickable. So if the clickable from this frame is not equals, is not equal to the previous clickable, we're going to call the on hover enter, and then we're going to store that clickable here. And here before we call the on on hover enter, I forgot that we must check if clickable is not null. 
otherwise we will get an error from there. So let's try this now and our NPC should only show that he's being hovered once. There we go. So only once is on hover enter being called. Now we also want to call on hover exit. So let's go back to NPC and make a debug here. Exit. So here in our input manager, we have the case when clickable is not equal to the previous clickable. That can mean either two things. We either hovered inside another different NPC or something that we could hover, or uh, the clickable became null. Either of these two cases must trigger the on hover exit from the previous clickable. So before we actually set the previous clickable as the current clickable, we're going to call previous clickable dot on hover exit. We also need to check if the previous clickable was not null before we can actually call the on hover exit method. So now let's try it one more time. Now, if we hover on our NPC, we get an on hover enter, on hover exit, on hover enter, on hover exit. And we should have the same amount because they will happen one after the other. And that's pretty accurate, I guess. So um, that's it for hover enter and hover exit. We also have to do it here, but this one is a little bit different and it's a little bit tricky because we're actually going inside a for each loop that is getting each result. So if there is a bunch of results in this array, we're going to overwrite the previous clickable with the last result because the last result can be either a clickable or can be either have no clickable, therefore it's a null. So we have to store the result in a variable before we actually do everything. So first we're going to check for this. This is, uh, we, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to see if our pointer is over a UI object, check. Now we're going to go through each result of the UI objects under the pointer. Uh, but instead of calling this right here, I'm going to make a variable first. I'm going to make an I clickable. We're going to call it clickable2 equals null. And then inside this for each loop, we're going to actually uh, the same here. If the result of game object the get component clickable is not null, we're going to set our clickable as this result. So clickable is result.gameObject.get component I clickable. And then we're going to break, right? Um, because we just want to get the first I clickable. If there is two I clickables, we are going to get the one behind it. We want to get the first one. So uh, we break the for each loop that will take us here. And here we're going to check something really similar like here. So first, if clickable is not equal to the previous clickable, that means is the first time we hover inside this clickable to this. If previous clickable is not null, then we're going to do this. And actually it's the exact same thing. There you go. The previous clickable becomes the clickable. So now we can actually try this on our item as well. Uh, we need to give the item an on hover enter. So uh, debug.log item on hover. Enter and item on hover exit. So now we can try this with our sort. And if we put our mouse on top of it, item on hover enter, item on hover exit. There we have the same event for our items. And actually, anything that is an I clickable, we could do the same for a monster. So if a monster, we highlight over a monster, we could show the stats or the HP of that monster. Uh, you decide what you do when you hover on top of anything. So uh, that's the part of the input manager that we, what we have to do. Uh, so we have it here on hover inside this scope and it's pretty much done. Now we have to do the last thing that is change the value of the width 
of this outlined to zero and back and forth when we hover on this guy. I'm going to have the default value as zero. Uh, you could actually have this always as two and just change the material or change the shader. I'm just going to do the value because I want to try that. And for doing that, we are going to use a method from the Unity scripting API is called set float. So this allows us to set the variables that you see here, like the main color or the outline width in this case, what is which is what we want to change. Uh, so let's go to the code um, here in NPC. When we hover enter, we're going to get a component in children. Get component in children, we're going to get the renderer dot material dot set float. And the parameter for this is a string that is the name of the variable we want to change, but it's I'm sure it's not called outline width. To see the actual name of this parameter, this value here, we need to right click and click on select shader. So when you select the shader, you will see here on the inspector the properties. And the properties we want to change is called underscore outline. That's a range, so it's an actual float. Uh, and we can change that through our code. So here in set code, we're going to type our string, which is underscore outline, and we're going to set the value we want to send it to. So I want to set it to 0 0.2 because we are entering, so we want to highlight it. And then on hover exit, I want to set it back to 0 because we're unhighlighting it. We're exiting the NPC with our mouse. There we go, no errors. Now we can try this. I think it makes sense. I think you guys understand what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to hover on top of my NPC and there we go. So we're highlighting it. I think this is good enough. We can talk with him again. Uh, we have this overlapping. We should move our dialog box a little bit uh, up, I think, uh, something like that, uh, so we can read. Please go examine the water well. We could do the same for the water well. If we change the shader here to outlined silhouette diffused. We change the color of the silhouette to a yellow. And you see that's a little problem with this outline. You can use different outline types uh, and you will not get that problem. Or you could modify the shader if you want. Um, so once I highlight the well same things happen because our our well is actually an eye clickable and it's also an NPC. So there you go. We can talk with this guy and he's going to be highlighted. We also have the event on item on hover. So I'm going to challenge you guys to create a method to highlight the slots that we are currently hovering on. So something similar to what we did with the NPC, but maybe instead of using a shader, you could use some sprite or change the color of the item. That's going to be a homework for you guys. Tell me in the comments what you did in order to highlight the items. And I think that's it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. It's been a long time since I made the last one, so I'm very happy to be making more videos. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to leave you now, so it's great talking to you. Have a good day. Goodbye.